We live in a day today where attention has become the currency. And not just gold, not just silver, but attention has become the currency of a modern generation. A documentary about social media dilemma says, if you are not paying for a product, then you are the product. Social media sees your attention as a product. In fact, we are a product. Our attention is the product being sold to the advertisers. Social media, this is what people who worked in social media developed like buttons, share buttons, and a lot of others. There's a whole documentary where different engineers from the social media machine, this is what they said. He said, you see social media as a tool. We designed it as a drug. Your attention is the product now. Your attention is the currency, but this Warsaw works in marriages. Your attention is the currency for intimacy. If you want to have intimacy with your spouse, all you got to do, you don't have to be super funny. You, you got to do that when you're single. The moment you're married, you don't have to be super clever. All you got to do is pay attention. You pay with your attention for intimacy. You pay with your attention for closeness. You pay with your attention for God's blessing on your life. You also pay with your attention for car accidents when you use the phone and you drive and text. Our attention is under attack. I'm going to read you the statistic. National Safety Council reports the cell phone usage while driving leads to 1.6 million crashes every year. One out of four car accidents in the United States is caused by texting and driving. Now listen to this. Texting while driving is six times more likely to cause an accident than being drunk while driving. Texting while driving is six times more likely to cause an accident than being drunk. There is an attack on our attention. There is an attack on our ability to pay attention. So many people, we live in a generation today where we are not able to fully pay attention without distraction. Like for example, if you monitor yourself, within about 15 minutes or 5 minutes, your phone gets, your, 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 your hands start searching for something else to do on the phone. Seven minutes into a date night and you need to check your phone. Of course, maybe somebody died. Maybe something really big happened. Who liked my picture? Who followed me? There's a constant ad ad addiction even to the things where we cannot focus to one thing at a time. And I believe that God wants to bring freedom to people's lives from this area. And God also wants to show us something today. If you are under attack, there is a very high chance you paid for that attack with your attention. Uh, this week, you know, if, if you're married and you're a husband, most likely UPS guys, you know, come deliver packages to your house that your wife ordered. It would be foolish to get up there with a baseball bat and begin to threaten the UPS guy for bringing packages. And say, why are you bringing packages to my house? And he will look innocently and say, well, it's not my fault. I'm only delivering what your wife paid for. I wonder how many things devil delivers to us that we paid for with our attention. I wonder how many emotional problems devil delivers to us and we cast out the devil but in reality we made the transaction and paid with it with our attention. For example, you give too much attention to news, you give too much attention to the social media, you will have anxiety. You will actually live in your house closed in and feel like the only time you should get out is when the world finds a vaccine for death. So many people today are trapped and this is not to bring shame on anybody who is not feeling comfortable staying in. What my goal today is this, is that if you're battling with fear, battling with anxiety, stop watching conspiracy theories. Take a break from news media. Take a break from social media feed. Take a break from your favorite place that feeds you, not with the truth and life, but feeds you with things that create negativity. You can't live a positive life with a negative mind. And a lot of times what happens is that we pay for our own depression with our attention. Whatever we give our attention to becomes something that fills our life. Then devil delivers packages, but he doesn't deliver them just to any address. He delivers them to addresses that paid for those packages with their attention. And therefore today's message is going to be called pay 
with attention because your attention is the currency for which you pay for your attention is the currency for which you pay for you know I used to uh, subscribe to the local news and to, to other news and it became frustrating because every single post had to do with how many people died out of COVID I didn't see one where they shared how many people recovered a doctor John Inanoidis, and I apologize if I mispronounced his name, which I probably did. Professor of Medicine of Health and Research Policy of Biomedical Data Science at Stanford University School of Medicine. Big shot, in other words. He said this, if you are between ages 20 and 40, your risk of dying from COVID-19 is the same as your chance of dying from playing football. If you are between ages 15 and 24, you are more likely to be fatally afflicted by falling down the stairs than by COVID-19 from 15 to 24. Kids under 15 have more chances of getting hit by lightning than dying from COVID-19. Healthy women under 40, your odds of dying from COVID-19 are about the same as dying from a plane crash. If you are under the age of 65, your chance of dying of COVID-19 is the same risk you face from dying, your, from dying while driving your car to work. And what happened is this, because the mass media, because of all that information, people are living under attack that's self-imposed. We paid for it with our own attention. There are people I prayed for, for freedom in the last few months for, from deliverance, from anxiety. There are people I prayed for who have, you know, even insomnia. And I asked them, I said, could you turn off YouTube? Could you turn off the Fox? Could you turn off the CNN? Could you log off and honestly read the simple word of God? I was uh, having a haircut yesterday at my barber and, and my barber mentioned something. He said, he said, the world is crazy. I said, no, it's not. I said, is Tricetis crazy? He said no I said is our streets crazy I said no I said only what's crazy is media because the world what media does is it takes the worst places in the world and puts them all in a one big bundle and then you can't enjoy your city you can't enjoy your family because you live with a negative mind you can't live a positive life and then depression sips in sleeplessness comes in you become political you become anxious you become fearful because you pay for that with your own attention God wants us not to live under attack. He wants us to live under open heaven. He wants us to live under His presence. He wants us to live under the mighty hand of God. And for that to happen, my friend, we must understand, it's not enough to tell the devil, stop bringing me package of depression. Stop bringing me package of anxiety. We need to disconnect. We need to disable this payment method called attention, giving attention to everything and anything that is online or even around us. Can somebody say amen? I'm going to read to us today a verse from Mark chapter 4 verse 24. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Somebody say more. more. Touch your neighbor and say, there is more for you. If you're watching, you can comment below if you want more. The Bible says, take heed to what you hear for with the same measure that you use will be used to you. So we want to see a few things from this verse. One is that every person has a certain measure in their life. It's also confirmed in the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 where it says that we, we all have a measure of Christ's gift in our life. Meaning there's a certain measure that we all have. Some of us have this measure, it's been passed on to us by our family. For example, there's a measure of peace that your family might have. It, it's been your grandpa had this measure, your father had this measure, you have this measure. Some people have a measure of depression. Some people have a measure of fights in the family. Some people have a measure of poverty. Honestly, it's like a family thing. Everybody is born with this particular measure. And you use that measure, it's being given back to you. There is a certain measure, it creates a ceiling and a limit in your life. I love those books and songs and conferences, no limits, but that's not true. Okay, I know it looks really good on Instagram, hashtag no limits, there are limits. All right, there are limits and I don't care how many books you read, I don't care how, how many degrees you have, you will have limits because we all have a measure. 
You and I have a measure. Can somebody say amen? We have a measure of influence. We have a measure of God's grace. We have a measure of even knowledge. We all have a measure and currently we have a measure as a church of how many people come to church, how many people being saved, how many people being healed. There is a measure, there is a ceiling and there is a limit. There is a, a thing that we reach and God says use that measure, work that measure, meaning work the measure that you have. But then he says this, he said to those of you who hear, you can trick the measure and you can have more than your measure. God says you can have more, more will be given. We'll, uh, while everybody is enduring or enjoying their measure, you can step into another level in life and have more than your measure in finances, in marriage, in your walk with Christ and God gives this secret. He doesn't say those who pray. He doesn't say those who fast, though prayer and fasting is vital. He doesn't even say those who give, though giving is very important. He says those who hear more will be given. If you've ever been in debt and your whole family is in debt, all you need to do is read and listen to Dave Ramsey for one year and you will have more than your measure. You're struggling with marriage. All you got to do is find a marriage counselor. Start reading marriage books and you will find out that there will be a more than your measure in your marriage. Same thing happens in your relationship with the Lord. If you switch off from things that are not holy and wholesome and you start listening and feeding yourself with the things of God, there will be more than the measure that you currently enjoy in your walk with God. There is a new level that exists in our walk with God, in our walk in our finances, in our walk in our marriage and if that measure is unlocked by what we hear, what we pay attention to. In other words, your attention is the currency for the next level in life. Your attention, my attention, what I give my eyes, my ears, what I give, what content I consume every single day is what determines the next level in my walk with God. Now this is the misconception that we have fallen to believe. That as long as I have a desire and intention, I will have a new level in life. Your intention doesn't determine new level. Everybody has good intentions. It's your attention that determines new level in life. Every failing marriage has a good intention to have a good marriage. Every failing person in their finances had good intentions. Intentions do not determine new level. It's the attention that you give to. What you read, what you watch, what you subscribe to, what you fill your life on your free time, on your drive to work, while you are working out. What is going into your mind is the key that will unlock the new level in your life. That's why Jesus Jesus called Pharisees he said you took the key of knowledge knowledge is the key that unlocks a new room that you are not in yet and my friend unfortunately many of us think that as long as I have a good desire that's enough as long as I have a good intention my life will change intentions will not change your life desires will not change your life it has to be your spiritual diet that will change your life can somebody say amen a diet will change your life. Spiritual diet. They say in the area of, of fitness, 20% of exercise affects your health and the rest of the 80 is your diet, is your eating. So if you're working out and you're running and you're exercising an hour every single day, but the rest of the 80%, you're eating whatever, you will not be as fit as you want to be fit. The same thing applies to our new level in life. If you go to school, it's one thing, that's great. You know, stay away from this, that's awesome. But the question is, what is your spiritual diet? If you hate your job, but you don't hate it enough to change your diet, you will live a miserable life in your career. If you, I just hate my marriage, but not enough to change the usage of your leisure time. Not enough to switch off the entertainment and turn on the enlightenment. Not enough to switch off things that numb you and turn things on that nurture you. Not enough to turn off a radio and turn on an audiobook while you drive. An average person, a statistic says that an average person spends, a study done by Harvard said that an average person spends 101 minutes per day driving. Now I understand you live in Tri-City so we're not average. 
we don't spend 100 hours a day uh, excuse me 100 minutes I'm sorry 100 minutes a day driving most of us drive less than 100 minutes a day but let's say 50 minutes a day you spend driving that means that's few audible books every single week that means that could be a lot of consumption but most of us do not use that time and then we are angry with our spouses we're angry with our bosses we're angry with our church we're angry with the world while we come from work and four hours two of those hours are spent on social media and the other two is spent on tv you don't hate your life enough to change it and it's almost like God's like, I, wanna, I want you to suffer more until you stop relying on your intentions and desires and you say, you know what, I'm going to change. I see people all the time who say, you know, I want to lose weight. Your desire is not enough. Oh, my intention is I'm going to get healthier. 2020, I'm going to go healthier. That's not enough. Desires are not enough. It's change of a diet that's enough you have to change your diet oh I want to walk in the ministry I want to walk in the anointing that is awesome that's not a, that's not enough you have to have a change of your diet spiritual diet has to change oh but I just don't have time to go to college I don't have time you have four hours of free four hours every single day but I need to unwind unwind from what nothing else is working there's nothing to unwind from we have to use the time to say you know what yes i cannot change the fact that i work here i would love to have a different job but i'm gonna come from home and instead of unwinding i'm going to rewire my life so that in five years i have a different job i will get classes i will get books i will change my attention do not you i'm not a please understand i'm not against unwinding but not four hours a day I'm not against you know having a time where you you spend time on social media but not like an average person spends two hours a day on social media and then we don't like our measure we want more and think just because I want more I will get it the Bible says the key is not wanting it the key is what you hear and God says if you want it change what you spend your free time on what you spend your workout time on what you spend your driving time on have other things that will go into you so that in the next two three years your life changes not because God did a miracle but because you applied his principle and you took the key of knowledge because somebody say amen not only desire doesn't change our life but but diet does but the, the other part that I want to highlight is Many times we get discouraged because when we begin to spend time on uh, listening, learning, feeding ourselves, we then become inconsistent. We want to see results right away. It's kind of like a person who ate unhealthy all their life and today they decided to speak, skip McDonald's and they're hoping to lose 10 pounds tomorrow. That's not how that works. It's today's attention guarantees tomorrow promotion not today's promotion today what you give your today's attention changes tomorrow's appetite today's attention it changes tomorrow's level in life today's attention changes tomorrow's habits today what I give myself today this is what God says to Joshua he's Joshua said this to the people of Israel he says sanctify yourself today for tomorrow God will do wonders in your midst sanctify yourselves for tomorrow God will do wonders in your midst and see you have to understand is today's sanctification brings tomorrow's miracles today's consecration brings tomorrow's conquest today's sacrifice brings tomorrow's success and a lot of times people who will begin to shift what they give their attention to and they say you know what we're gonna change what we watch we're gonna change what we listen to we're gonna change what we read or we're gonna start reading we're gonna change how we unwind we are going to change and replace that stuff you won't see the change right away because God says tomorrow I will do wonders in our midst my friend if you want God to do wonders in your midst please understand what you have today is a result of yesterday's attention what you will have tomorrow will be a result of today's attention if you don't like where you are today today it's not God's fault my friend and I'm gonna tell you one thing and it's also not your fault of what you did today it's what you did yesterday if you don't like the way you are in your health if you don't like the way you are in your marriage as a general rule if you don't like where you are in your walk with Christ you must understand is where you give your attention today 
tomorrow something will be changing tomorrow you will notice a change in your character you will notice a change in your spirit you will notice a change in your emotional and mental state but some of us it's not the problem that we're not patient to wait for the tomorrow it's not the problem with us that we are you know lack persistence it's that changing our attention stop feeding on things that are poisonous has become an addiction for us we have become addicted because this is how attention works at first whatever you give your attention creates your appetite and then after that appetites become addictions appetites become addiction pornography is not something you look at first you look at it and then it, you're hooked at it and then you can't stop looking at it and even if you make promises to yourself you can no longer stop looking at pornography pornography is not the only thing that does that so is entertainment at first it entertains you and then it captivates you at first you consume it and then it controls you and a lot of us the reason why we can't switch what we give our attention to is because if we be very honest we're addicted we're hooked and we no longer I hear sometimes people say well I don't want to stop playing video games why your attention creates your appetite what you give your attention to you didn't have an appetite for video games it was developed because you paid with it for your attention same thing with sports some people are addicted to sports check every single day they know every player that is in NFL or NBA but they don't know one name of the disciple of Jesus Christ and they have a passion even as I'm speaking right now they already checked you know the scores and what's happening and why why is that happening because your affection your appetite comes from what you give your attention to you didn't grow up knowing about football it's because you gave in your attention to that it became your appetite I'm not against football I'm just against addiction and making an idol out of football where you sacrifice church you sacrifice your family and you're constantly on your phone and you're checking those people who honestly give you nothing except taking your time and you're not happy with where your life is at that's what I am against and I think that God is against that because our attention becomes our appetite we begin to want that which we gave our attention to and then after a while it becomes our captor it becomes something we are addicted to we can no longer be free from and so when you hear something like that you're like yeah 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 it doesn't apply to me yes my friend it does apply to you the only difference is for you it's not going to be enough to make a decision to stop watching you need deliverance for many people they could simply repent and say God I'm sorry switch and for people who are hooked they don't need decision they need deliverance because when you're addicted you no longer need self-help you need God help you need to be delivered you need God's help you need somebody to break the chain of that addiction you might need to fast you might need to not only repent you you are actually trapped in the net and somebody is sponsored that net and somebody derives joy from the fact that your life is going nowhere and is sucking life out of you and you have no desire for the things of God no appetite for the holy things no passion for the things of God and life is going and it's not how you intended to do what you do at the age of 25 but you can't change it no more why because you listen to this message like, yeah 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 and you go home to the same rut to the same thing why because it's a trap and it's an addiction now and it's demonic there are demons behind it you're just like does it mean that I have a demon no you have a company <laughs> you got company you're not alone in what you're doing how I know that because the Bible says God gives us desire to do his will if God gives desires so do devils if God, if God gives me appetite so do demons if God gives me something to crave after so does the devil and you might not have a demon in you but you got company Last week, uh, Prophet Ed, uh, when, when he was here, he ministered. It was an awesome conference. And I was dropping, we were, me and Ilya were dropping him off. And uh, in, in, the, in the parking lot, I asked him quickly, does he drink coffee? And he said, no, I, I don't drink coffee. I haven't done it in 28 years. I looked at him, I was like, you're missing out, bro. <laughs> and I said, may I ask you why you don't drink coffee? And, and I'm like, a, you know, coffee, not drinker. I'm addicted to coffee. And so he looks at me and he said, I was casting out demons of caffeine. And I've seen a lot of crazy deliverances. We've done quite a few of them ourselves. And I looked at him, I was like, really? Caffeine? 
And I was like, anything else? Demons of apple and bananas maybe? You know, and, and I'm looking, and I, sarcastically, I was like, I was like, come on. He said, Vlad, if you can't go without coffee, you're not free men. He says, if you can't live without coffee, he said, what kind of a Christian are you? If you get attacks called migraines, if you stop it, he said, don't tell me that's healthy. And then he says this, that the quote that I just used. He said, if you're addicted to anything, you got company. I was like, deliver me, man, I got <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was delivered. When he said that, I was delivered. It's been seven days without coffee. <laughs> or caffeine. Now, I'm not against coffee. I understand. We have coffee, coffee holders. We have coffee shop. <laughs> I think Mike is going to be like, hey, man, finally, we can close that thing down. Uh, no, 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 not, not, not that fast. Honestly, I went home and I started to think, I have said this, I can't live without coffee. And the Holy Spirit convicted me and He said, can you say that about me? And when I stopped taking coffee on Saturday, on Sunday, I had such a migraine headache. I preached with migraine headache last Sunday. That's why the message on misery was so good because it came straight from the heart. I took pills on Sunday and then I still had headaches. On Monday, I had headaches. And I took three days to fast this week for my personal deliverance. Why? I'm not against coffee. I probably will still take it after maybe some time. But I've noticed one thing. If you're addicted in one area, it's usually never just one area. It's a place of domino effect. Demons, there's... Every time Jesus did deliverance, you always saw us demons, not one. Because one demon comes in as this one, he always opens the door for his cousin. He always invites his nephew. There's always multiple of demons that will come into a person because it plays a domino effect. And I started to examine my heart and I've noticed in this area, in that area, where you just kind of, you let it go, you let it go, you let it go. And then it's slowly, and the enemy doesn't always seek to come in. If he can only be in your company, he'll be happy. And my friends, some of us are in that place right now where giving attention to holy things, giving attention to the things of God, seeking God's face, praying, reading God's word, um, coming to church, even paying attention in church without. All of that is an appetite problem. There's no appetite. When there is no appetite, my friend, it's because there's already attention given to something else. There's something you're passionate about. There's something you're obsessed with. There's something you'll watch three hours straight and you will not even notice three hours past. There's something you'll pay subscriptions and you won't wonder, where do they spend my money on? No, you'll just go with it. Why? Because your obsession is there. Your addiction is there. And my friend, for many Christians on the outside, we claim to have affection, appetite, and attention to Jesus. But on the inside, a lot of us are slaves to technology. Our wives is complaining, can you get off your phone? Kids are scared because you're texting and driving. Why? Because you're addicted to that device. It's the constant TV is constantly is on and it's not holy things. It's not the sermons. It's not the miracles. It's not the signs and wonders. And we'll notice, why do I have no desire toward God? Why do I feel bored when I read this book? But I can scroll through aimless, dumb stuff and I am not bored. Why do I have no passion to fast? Why God doesn't speak to me anymore about giving? Why is my life complacent? Why am I burned out? Why am I numbing myself all the time? My friend, when you have no attention given to God you will have no appetite for God and when you have no appetite for God you develop alternative addictions and we need deliverance we need deliverance come on somebody amen somebody say amen when your desire is too weak deliverance is needed to, to, to finish this message practical three things to take home with you one is take inventory of your attention. Mark 4, 24, Jesus said, take heed to what you hear. He didn't say first change what you hear. He said, take heed. Take heed to what you hear before you change what you hear. Take inventory of your attention. Look at your phone. How much time do you spend on social media? Just take inventory. What do you do when you drive? Take inventory of if, if you work out or go for walks, what do you listen to? Unless you prefer total silence and solitude. What do you watch on your free time? When was the last time you opened your Bible? 
after your devotions in the evening. Do you have peace or anxiety? Are you burning for God or are you burned out? Are you creative or have you become critical? Are you numbing or are you nurturing? Are you in what you're feeding yourself? Is it enlightening you or is it just entertaining you? Is what I'm eating feeding me? Is what I'm consuming controlling me? Take inventory of your heart. I can't tell every person what God is dealing with me that he has to deal with you but I invite the Holy Spirit right now even as you're listening us on live stream or in here let the Holy give Holy Spirit room to, to zip the veil out and take inventory of your heart number two redirect your attention today where you want to excel tomorrow ask yourself a question where do you want to grow tomorrow where do you want to be tomorrow based on that you will pay for your tomorrow's excel with today's attention. Redirect your attention. You might not have money for college, but there is a lot of free courses online. You might not have money to go get a business degree, but there are so many books that you can borrow from library or pay for that could change how you think about business and how you think about your finances. You might not afford to go get counseling as a married couples. You know the podcasts are free and you can listen to them nah but I just I don't like to listen then enjoy your miserable marriage I'm sorry <laughs> I meant what I said <laughs> that's why I'm sorry for I just don't like the way we are financially well if you are not willing to change what you learn then enjoy your poverty enjoy that debt and that constant fighting you gotta change what you put yourself into you change your here and your life tomorrow will begin to change choose your diet you know a person who eats whatever and then they're like well I don't like my body well you fed it <laughs> nobody shoved it into your mouth you bought that you ate that and it was your hand last time I checked not an alien that shoved it into your mouth <laughs> amen you know, when I cut off coffee, I started to eat healthier. I started to, uh, God bless soul, she started to make these green juices. I remember one time she made it, I looked at that stuff and I was like, that's the nastiest thing I've ever seen. I said, I will never even, and I smelled it, it even smelled worse than the way it looked. Now those juices, it's, it's the manna from heaven. I drink the thing, I was like, this is way better than coffee. Why? Because you will develop new appetites after a while your health and this is how it works you begin to get one area of your life under control of the Holy Spirit it will lead right away to another area how many of you after you exercise you want to eat better after that you want to live you wash your car you want to watch how you drive you avoid the puddles you know God why did you send the rain this is not Seattle why because you wash the car because it's a domino effect and the moment you let yourself go you let go of your attention you watch whatever you're tired I'm burned out I just had a horrible day well you're about to make it worse and you're like, well, I'm just going to bench watch on something. And next thing that happens is that your tomorrow, you can't excel in your tomorrow because you're slacking today. And God is not asking anything hard. He just pay with your attention. You want to change your future? God says, I give you the opportunity. Here is the currency. You got it. Every person got it. Every person has the same amount of this currency. It's called your attention. Number three, last one. Endure temporary withdrawals. When you start paying with your attention for new altitude in life, there is a price and this price is called keeping your focus. Get ready for withdrawals. Uh, when it comes to coffee this week, I had a hard time sleeping at night. I don't have a problem sleeping at night. I couldn't sleep at night, partially probably because of fasting. And then I had needles from two in the morning from here all the way there. It was like sharp needles were pinching me. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't. I woke up, went to prayer. Of course, I was like, well, there's a solution for that. And I told my wife and I said, I don't know what's happening. And she said, that's what drug addicts experience when they have withdrawals. <laughs> my wife shoots straight. <laughs> She's like, you, you're just going through the process of deliverance. <laughs> there is withdrawals when you start shifting where you focus on. 
for example if you always got used to entertainment you're gonna get pumped right now you're like you know I'm just gonna go I'm gonna honestly finish that book that I started in January I'm gonna pick that back back up you know gyms reopen I'm gonna go back you, you're gonna get excited within about seven or five days withdrawals kick in where the emotions die and then you become unstable so what do you do then you do you focus with your attention on that which you committed as a form of payment not as a form of enjoyment you just do it as a form of a payment I remember when I had to change my spiritual diet to watch miracles signs and wonders I loved me good funny connecting sermons I enjoyed them and the Lord started to shift he says is that what you want to see in ministry no I want to see deliverance I want to see healings he says then you have to watch people who move in that I said God but I don't like them I don't like their preaching style I don't like their hour services which are usually seven hours long and I was like I don't like that stuff and God's like well then you have to understand you can't excel in the area you're not willing to pay for by yielding your attention to that particular field you're gonna spend your time on something you're gonna watch something you're gonna listen to something you're gonna feed yourself with something why don't you choose your diet based on the destiny God has promised you choose your diet based on the destiny you desire that God placed within you and you will see changes in your life I encourage you pay with your attention you are paying with your attention for something whatever that's coming in in your life right now if you're very honest with yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to examine your heart you will see the transaction was made and your payment was your attention was the payment for that thing that you have right now in your life you can change your payment you can change your currency and you will change what comes into your life